Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and others have greatness thrust upon them. This story is about the latter. With no recollection of his name, a man finds himself in the world of Avatar, forcing him to accept the idea that the show he once watched as a kid is not. In fact, fictional has taken a massive toll on him, torn as he is between the awesomeness of his newfound powers, as well as the absurdity of how everything came to be. He will do what humans do best, he will overcome and adapt and greatness will follow. What's up guys? It's your boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn in a TLA? Becoming the Greatest Water Bender. Remember to check out the original story, the link is in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. As my body slowly woke up, I immediately noticed something wrong. It was too dark, and I knew for a fact that I always left the computer on. And for some reason my bed was cold and somewhat wet. This was odd to say the least. I rolled around and moved my arm to brush the really uncomfortable wetness on my back. As my eyes started to acclimatize to the environment, I grimaced in shock as the situation started to finally sink in. Maybe this was a dream, and with that in mind, I closed my eyes once again in denial. But as soon as I opened my eyes again with the hopes of finding a different sight, all I could see and confirm were my original thoughts. I wasn't in my house anymore. How in the fuck I ended up in the attic? I frantically whipped my head around trying to find out where I was, and more importantly how the fuck I got here. But all I could see was miles and miles of white snow in every freaking direction, and that did not help to alleviate my panic. I carefully sat down, deciding to analyze my situation was I kidnapped. If so, why would anyone want me in this ice tundra? Did they take any organs perhaps? Was this the way they dealt with people after harvesting them? No. This was too expensive and defeated their purpose. As I pondered what and how, I noticed something. My body was different very different. I was white, but my skin was a light brown tone. Odd too I felt smaller. I was normally 6 foot tall. But right now I kinda felt a foot shorter, while the idea was preposterous and idiotic. Something in the back of my head told me. This wasn't the body I was used to. So this is either a really realistic dream or somehow some way I ended up in a different body. I kinda feel bad for the old guys in my neighborhood that said they were abducted by aliens. Cause I kinda understand them now. I thought as I stared intently at my hands. If this was a dream, I was bound to wake up sooner or later. But the lingering thought of this being real was so settled in my head that I feared my mind was right. Well if this is real, I will die out here. So let's see where do I go. Before I could even decide in which direction I would walk and then die, a sound caught my attention, something was coming towards me. Before I could even find where the sound was coming from, something knocked me off my feet headfirst into the snow. Great turning to see what had tackled me to the ground. I found something disturbing in front of me. It was cute, I suppose, but unfortunately every feeling I had was overshadowed by my current situation, a probably biologically impossible creature was above me. It kinda looked like an otter, and a penguin had too much to drink, and well this came out. Now that I think about it, I have only seen this in. Oh, well, I suppose that explains the snow. If this was real at least, I knew where I was in the world of Avatar. Awesome not the world I would have picked, but certainly not a bad one I suppose. Glass half full kind of situation. I pushed the overly friendly otter penguin off me as I breathed out in agitation, but something caught my attention. The otter penguin started to slide away too fast, afraid if I had to guess, taking a deep breath. I glanced around trying to see if I was being too crazy something was moving, but I couldn't really tell with everything being white around I swore I saw something there. I narrowed my eyes at the spot and I saw it. Suddenly, yellow dots that I had failed to notice started to move towards me. What is that? I pondered taking a few steps back, and apparently, it was the wrong call. Because whatever it was decided to attack, letting out a loud growl, the creature leapt from the snow, and I was finally able to see what it really was, a fucking polar bear dog. And I still don't regret not taking that class about surviving in the wild. I shouted as I tried to outrun a creature that could absolutely outrun me. Not exactly my smartest move. The beast snarled at me, running behind me, ready to eat me. I don't taste good. I live off trash food I yelled in fear. However, my screams of terror only made me look tastier because the polar bear dog lunged at me. For a second everything froze in my mind. What did I have around me that I could use? Snow can I kill anything with that? Fuck. In panic and knowing I could not escape I decided to go down fighting. I knew many martial arts. 
and while they were useless against animals, I might deliver some damage. With that in mind, I threw my strongest punch at his eye, the fucker would go down one eye after today. I closed my eyes doing this, and all I could focus on were the giant teeth headed my way. The needle sharp, saliva dripping more coming to consume Don and coming, and coming, and that sure was a painless death, or I have nothing brain. As I tried to get an answer, I noticed something was not right. I could hear a dog whimpering in pain, opening my eyes with hesitation as I looked around, seeing the polar bear dog whimpering, his white fur covered in blood as many ice spikes were piercing his body. I'm okay with this development as the adrenaline left my body my head sagged. Whatever happened it was me if this was really the world of the Avatar. I might have some bending skills, and by my ethnic looks, water bending was possibly my thing now. The pain started to spread around my body. It seemed the bear managed to scratch me, and under the adrenaline rush, I felt nothing until now. Great that was the last thing I thought before I passed out. Waking up for the second time was better than the first. The first thing I noticed was that this time I was on a bed. The weather was still cold, but somehow more bearable. Then the smell of tea invaded my nose. It took him a few seconds to realize I was inside a tent of sorts from the outside. I could hear voices and people moving. With that I bolted up in surprise. Where am I? I muttered looking around as my stomach growled all of a sudden. I was starving, but for the looks of my treated wound. I was not a prisoner. God I'm hungry, oh finally. A tall man with a short beard entered the tent with a wide smile. I was starting to think you would not wake up. My name is Yu. How are you feeling buddy? I feel alive thanks. I smiled. Nasty cut you got there. Yu chuckled pointing with his hands to the blood covered rags he had used to clean me. Which brought one single thought to my head. How the fuck was I still alive? That much blood. Dear lord. Wow, I gulped in shock. But we found thanks to the blood, Yu smiled as he served me a cup of tea. We have some soup if you want. I nodded with enthusiasm. I would love that. I was hungry, and free food is known to taste better. Alright, I'll be back, Yu smiled. But I stopped him before he left, for I had one question. Where am I? I asked once again. I wanted to know exactly where I was before making plans. Hum, I'd said 30 miles away from the Northern Water Tribe, Yu answered as he left to serve me the soup he offered. Well, I suppose my first order of business is learning how to control my only weapon in this not so peaceful world. Water bending can be quite the terrifying power with enough creativity, not a dream well shit. I chuckle seeing my reflection on a mirror I found in the tent. I understood now why I was smaller. It was for a good reason. By my looks I would say I was 12 or 13 instead of 25. Well, another realization hit me. I didn't remember my name. Fuck I had fallen asleep once again. And the first thing I noticed as I woke up was that the pain where my injury should have been was mostly gone. Then the hard and slightly cold bed floor under me, followed by the smell of food being cooked. It took me a few seconds to realize I was on a bed with bandages over my injuries, comma. Something I had not been expecting at all after my encounter with that wild amalgamation. Apparently, I had found myself in a house of sorts with ice for walls. It was different than anything I had seen before, meaning this was real. I was actually in this fantasy world, taking a deep breath. I noticed the room had a door that was only about 10 feet across the bed I was laying in. The door was open, letting the cold breeze of winter go through. Outside the sounds of people filled the air, talking probably. But considering I didn't hear that many people it was safe to assume I wasn't in a city, but in a small tribe. I could not help but stare in delight mixed with a tinge of fear, at how lovely and tremendously overwhelming everything looked. This was real. I had someone found myself in the not-so-peaceful world of Avatar. A show that meant a lot to me during my childhood, but not a place I would choose to be as I pondered over my situation. A shadow appeared at the door. It was an old man of about 60 year old, his long blue hair tied into a high ponytail. He was wearing a robe with the color scheme of the water tribe. Ah, so you are finally awake the old man sat down beside me on a chair. The polar bear dog almost got you. Luckily my son you happened to pass by just in time. My name is called Makato. What is your name? Name? Yeah. Something I had for some reason beyond me forgotten, Akira. I don't know why that came out, but it seems I will just go with it. I'm glad you are good, Akira is not every day you get to fight one of those beasts. The old man said with a serious look as he beckoned towards the door, and an old woman walked in. This is my wife, Maru, she was that one that healed you. A pleasure to meet you. I tried to bow my head, just to feel a sharp pain on my chest. You have been injured, so don't exert yourself, explained Maru with a worried look. She then pulled out a pot of water out of her dress, and started to manipulate the liquid with very fluent motions over my body, making me feel a lot better. My healing techniques are quite rusty, but this will help you feel better. Now stretch your arms. Seeing she was my doctor for the moment I did as I was told. Yes ma'am, it will take a while for you to be at full health. But this should do for now, Maru informed me. 
Water healing will only help a bit, you need to rest so you can slowly recover over time. Of course it is much faster with tonics and stuff, for now take this every 4 hours. The old lady smiled as she filled a small bottle with the liquid she used to heal me, and handed it to me. If you feel any pain that should help, Mara smiled. I studied the item in my hands. The ceramic bottle had a cork lid and was warm to the touch. Thanks, Makoto sighed. This area is no longer safe. Since the war started, all the animals have been migrating out of their zones. Next time you are outside, be careful before I could even acknowledge the old man with a response. Screams erupted in the village. And deep down I felt something was very wrong. And it was because something about the size of a bear shot in from outside, landing in front of us. The old man got in position between us and the polar bear dog, and attacked with a water blade. But the amalgamation tanked the attack and lunged at him. Makoto yelled as it bit him on the side, blood splattering everywhere. I was a firm believer that if I had to die it would be fighting. I mean that was if I didn't have any other choice, and this seemed to be the case right now. With that in mind I leapt to my feet out of the bed, and, without thinking, I grabbed the closest thing to me and hit the beast on the head. The amalgamation fell back a bit, dropping Makoto on the floor, angry at my attack the beast snarled and jumped at me, baring its sharp spiky teeth. Once again I was at death's stalls. I knew that much, I was going to die, my attack didn't damage the monster at all. It had only severely pissed him off. It was all or nothing. I was hurt, and had no idea how to use any bending skills. So as the beast leaped at me, midair, hoping for the best I threw a fist at the monster, and a torrent of ice hit the beast killing it. As its body dropped to the floor, lifeless. Impressive, Makoto muttered, holding his wounded stomach tight as he sighed to think they would attack the village. My heart was pounding. This time I actually felt something when I created that ice pillar. It was after I was swimming in a pool. The same feeling I would normally get after getting out of a pool. It was exhilarating. Yet, this was something I had very little control over. But still I could feel the water in the air, the tide of the sea on my foot, when I had summoned that ice pillar to attack the amalgamation, and the impact that had vibrated from the ice pillar to my very core. It was as if the water was an extension of my own body, a part of me now. Before I could fully recover from the unexpected incident with yet again another beast of the same species, Mara cried out behind me. Watch out, there's another one. I turned in time to see as a similar creature leapt at me. But this time before I even tried to replicate what I had just done, a massive water whip pulled the beast out of the tent, slamming the beast to the ground. I apologize father. I had to deal with the ones attacking the village first. I didn't see these two coming here, Yu said as he entered the tent, panting. They were a pack coming for you. The warrior pointed at me. You killed the cub, and the pack came. The first monster I killed was a cub. Sorry, in the end it was my fault if they came to avenge their cub. It's alright, it's the reason we brought you here. Though I didn't expect the pack to be this large, you sighed. Are you okay dad? I'm fine, a bit chewed, but fine. Makoto chuckled as Mara healed him with water bending. He saved the lives, your dad is not combat ready anymore. And young Akira step up to the challenge, Mara smiled. I didn't expect someone so young to be such a powerful bender. I have no idea how I did it though, I sighed. We can fix that, Makoto smiled, and just like that I had my obtain my first master. After a week of recovering, that included a lot of rest and water healing. The day of my training to learn how to use the only tool that would help me survive on this world finally came. Makoto himself had offered to teach me. I walked up to Makoto. The old man smiled as he stood up. Follow me outside. I did as I was told, walking close behind the old man to outside his house. Besides snow and some tents, there wasn't much to see. The old couple's tent slash house was in the middle of the modest village. I was currently stuck in. As I walked behind him, I decided to take a quick glimpse around the village, trying to get a feeling of what my new world was. And it was both beautiful and terrifying. This is Hopo Village, we are mostly hunters, said Makoto with a smile, before guiding me to what he called the training ground of the house, which was only a very patch of open land. Is beautiful. I didn't lie, this place was beautiful. I always loved rural areas. They had a charm cities would never have. It is. Unfortunately we are in times of war, and to survive such dangerous times like this, you need to learn how to control the gift that has been given to you, said Makoto with a sorrowful expression. The old man placed one foot forward, bending his knees, holding his left hand out in front of him, palm forward, while his right stood behind his back loose but ready to move, his stance remarkably similar to many Taikai stances I had seen before, take my stance. Drawing from the little experience I had with Taikai, I copied the old man the best I could. Now focus your energy and thoughts into the tides, feel the water carrying you, feel the water guiding you, and once you feel that redirect that feeling into yourself and push it forward. Like this, said Mikoto, doing a swift motion where his left hand shot forward and the water on the pond front of him seemed to react to his action creating a tide. Now it's your turn, don't feel sad if you can't draw it, right now your bending is tied to your emotions, 
So without the trigger, you might find yourself in troubles. He was right. Both times I felt said connection I had been on a fight or flight situation, and even now I was a bit skeptical of all of this. A part of me wanted to believe this was a dream, as there was no way such a thing could happen in the real world. Getting transported into another world was ludicrous, but another part of me knew this was too real to be fake to be a simple fantasy. Alright? I nodded, concentrating on repeating the motions Makoto had shown me, taking a deep breath. I repeated every motion I had seen, and for a brief moment I felt the energy. My connection with the water as Makoto had said, I could feel as the energy, the water itself flowing through me, from deep within my stomach. It traveled up and down every part of my body. It was intoxicating. At the same time, during the last motion I felt a large portion of this intoxicating connection, draining from my body into the water, creating a big tide on the pond. That scared the crap out of some kids close to the pond. Impressive quote Makoto muttered, to think you would do it at your first try, I had a good teacher. I was beyond happy. I can probably speak for any man in the world. When I said we all wanted a superpower at some point, and now I had it. I was like an idiot looking at my hands in disbelief. Did I really do that? Of course I did, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of giddy delight building up inside of me. Fuck anyone who blames me. Makoto patiently waited, with a smile quietly for me to collect my dignity. I was after all having a fanboy moment. When I finally turned to look at him, the old man smiled at my enthusiasm. This is nothing but the basics. We don't really have any masters here. For you to get a real master, you would need to go to the Northern Water Tribe. But I suppose I could teach you all I know. So you can the very least know the basics. What about you? I inquired. He seemed like a competent waterbender. My son is no master. All he knows only works with beasts. All the skills he exhibits are for hunting, Makoto explained. I see. I nodded in acknowledgement. Now, practice that motion until lunch is ready, Makoto chuckled, going back to his humble home and being honest. I didn't need to be told twice. I wanted to practice this. I practiced for hours on the same movement, noticing that nothing came absolutely free. I didn't control water just because. No, I had to give something in return, energy. It took a few hours to tire the heck out of me. And I knew Taikai motions would not tire me. It was the bending part that added that problem to the equation. I have never been so tired in my life. I panted, maybe it was also the fact that I was probably a preteen or teen right now. My body was bound to be weaker to some extent. Lunch is ready, Mara called out. And it was music to my ears. I was starving, coming. I answered her with a starving smile. As I trotted to the kitchen, things weren't so bad for me. I had food and shelter, at least for now. We made some polar dog bear soup, Mara announced. Not exactly what I would eat. But like my father used to say, if you don't have options, you take what is given to you. Survival above anything else. How was the training? Mikoto inquired, already sitting on the table. Exhausting. I replied with a smile. And the days passed, with me practicing and learning everything Mikoto decided to teach me. Apparently I had a knack for it. Which was weird, considering my original world had no magic or mystical shit, unless you count politicians doing nothing but still being elected. But that's not magic I mean. But the point was that I had learned how to move water and shape it in forms really fast. Though I still lacked the concentration to use it in a fight. I was still able to mold it. All right enough training for today. I sighed as I looked at the sun far away in the sky. Which was now halfway on its journey toward the horizon. Which meant I had to go and find Yu's hunting group. I wanted to venture further into the ice tundra. More than I would normally do. And today was my chance to do so. After all, I had been invited to accompany the village hunting party with the intention of seeing them up close. Who knows? Perhaps I might even have the chance to use my skills or learn something new. Either way this would be very interesting. So what are we hunting? I inquired my small hunting group that consisted of a girl one year older than me, and a guy that looked older than everyone, but was actually my age. My biological age that was, but before I could even get an answer, a powerful growl that thundered deep within my head interrupted everyone swallowing any other sound. The sound was so loud, that made me clutch in pain. All of this was accompanied by the sight of one of the hunters the village had previously sent a few days running towards us as fast as his legs allowed him to, with absolute terror showing on his face. Run, cried the unknown hunter. Run how long have I been here? Two months, maybe more. And once again I'm probably on a fight or flight situation. Terrific, fuck. I muttered as I saw the man trip on his feet, falling face first into the snow, as the unknown beast was charging at him at full speed. Fuck plus one. I was an idiot, normally I would let bygones be bygones. People get themselves in awful situations, and it's really not my problem to help them. They can help themselves, but this village had been more than nice to me. A total stranger, 
So here I was running towards my own death trying to save him, was this a bad choice? Maybe, but there was no time to regret it now. Time to put to use what I have learned about waterbending I thought as I pushed the man out of what seemed to look like a tiger, mixed with a turtle and a bear together. The beast turned its attention to me, comma, charging at full speed. Now if we all gang on it we will. Oh I had failed to notice my hunting group had abandoned me, even the guy I had saved great, well, is like they say no good deed goes unpunished. And here I was facing the largest animal I had ever seen on person, being almost as tall and big as an elephant, but way faster and lethal probably. Take this fucker. I said, creating an ice prison around him, with many ice pillars. I was quite happy my bending was working under pressure, but my technique apparently meant nothing to the beast, who broke through the ice cage with its claws and fangs, tossing his paws left and right in fury. What kind of god decided to make this diabolical amalgamations? The beast growled, blasting at me like a bullet. But I dodged its charge first by pushing myself into the air with a burst of snow. Once I was in a better position, I started to try and sink the beast deep within the snow, freezing the bastard to death. But all it took the beast was one growl to break free of my restraints. Great, I muttered deciding to go for a more lethal approach taking a stance. I waited as the beast rushed towards me dodging the assault at the last human possible second, using this very moment to land a water-based pressure blade on its neck. And while the attack did manage to cut a bit of flesh, the beast didn't even flinch, once again I had only severely pissed my enemy off. Well, I cursed as I pushed myself out of the way with the snow beneath my feet, as the beast swung its massive claw at me. In hindsight I'm doing way better than in my training right now, apparently the imminent fear of death is an awesome teacher. It was clear the beast would not go down easily. But, at least now I had a weak point to target, the wound I had delivered on its neck. With that in mind every time I dodged its attacks, comma, I would deliver a water pressure blade on the same spot I had done before, taking my distance after each attack repeating the same over and over again. But I had failed to account for the beast's durability. The wound the beast had looked serious, bleeding a lot, but apparently not enough to kill it. And while I knew I was close to killing the beast, I was almost all out of energy. You are one tough monster. I panted, wondering why haven't the village sent someone to help me. It had been an hour already, more than enough time to send someone. I had energy for two attacks, after all. I would be out of the fight, not being able to bend with enough strength to actually do something. The beast turned its monstrous face at me, growling, his bleeding neck turning the snow beneath him from a clear white to a red car messy. In my defense you attacked me first. I shrugged, bracing myself as the massive deadly creature rushed at me flew running at full speed. This was my last chance to decapitate the monster. Once the beast was close enough its tail slapped me out of the way, but I was ready to receive some damage. It was part of the all or nothing plan as the tail hit me. The water blade finally managed to decapitate the monster. It wasn't something fast though. The blade went slowly through the monster necks as the giant amalgamation let out a long monstrous scream. That lasted for a minute before it fell to the ground in a thunderous thud. Oh, god life insurance policies rates must be through the roofs here. I panted, finally taking a break. I knew you could do it. Confused as to who said that I turned around finding you and the hunter clan behind him, you passed the adulthood test of the clan, congrats. Next time, I won't help. To think he would take on a juggernaut alone not even you can you. The test I had endured was beyond stupid for someone that had never used water bending on a real fight, and still these idiots thought, Let's have the kid fight an amalgamation that is the equivalent of a modern world tank. I'm leaving today. I informed the elder of the village, and while I was thankful for the help they provided me, in my time of need, I was ready to move forward. If you want you could stay here we don't have much, but we are all a family, Makoto offered. I appreciate the gesture, but I need to see the world. That, and I didn't want to be subject to their weird tribal tests. I see, Makoto sighed, then have always in mind you'll be part of the tribe. That's something you can't change. He smiled. I smiled. I won't. It took me roughly two hours to say my goodbyes to everyone in the village. Some were sad, others were happy that I got to travel, making the experience a roller coaster of weird emotions. Take this map, you said, as he handed a map to me. Use it to navigate the area. You might need to get a new one though. This one barely covers the north. I opened the map with care, seeing the village on it, and further north, the northern water tribe. And well, I had no idea how to read a map. But oh well, no time like the present to learn. Thanks, I smiled. Next time I see you I want to see a master, so be ready to kick my ass next time, or I'll kick yours. You laughed. I looked at him, and all I could see was the flashbacks of my deadly tribal test, where I had to fight that enormous best, and they didn't even have the decency of telling me. Oh don't worry your ass will be kicked, I answered with a cold tone. I is that a red flag? You asked one of his friends. Crimson, the unimportant friend answered. Well, it was a pleasure thanks for saving me, and teaching me how to better use my powers. Until next time, 
I said the last part with a dark overtone that startled you. The North was a beautiful no maybe the first few hours this shit was beautiful, but after walking for hours non-stop, seeing nothing but snow and ice, and the sporadic creature trying to eat me, I was bored, this place was incredibly dull. But I suppose not everything was bad, the cold didn't bother me anymore. Not since I had learned the basics of water bending, with one of the techniques being temperature regulation, quite handy if you live in this icy hell. Let's see I said as I opened the map hum, yep I'm lost, I sighed. I knew I was on my way to the northern water tribe, but how far was I, or where exactly? Yeah, no idea. I turned around trying to see if I could see something remarkable around, that I could locate in the map, and to my surprise, there was a little house in the distance. Who in the fuck builds a house in the middle of nowhere? I muttered, a bit surprised of this development, but happy nonetheless. I was tired after walking for so long, and I wanted to rest, and this house seemed like the best option right now. It takes me a few minutes to get there, but I managed to get to the house. The house looks old and abandoned, and without me even noticing I find myself climbing the exterior rickety ladder leading to the attic of the old house. Why was I going to the attic? No idea. With a heave and a cloud of dust. I opened the door to the attic taking a peek into the room. An alarmed core and a flutter of wings informed me of the presence of a bird's nest, somewhere in the darkness above. Core. And soon enough a raven called somewhat angrily at me, landing in front of me, like saying, You woke me up or something. I'm sorry. I chuckled and to my surprise the raven the raven took a good look at me, inspecting me for second, and surprisingly enough, nodded, accepting my apology. Getting over my initial shock, that the animal was smart enough to understand me. Well thanks buddy. I chuckled as I decided to take a good look around, surveying an odd collection of trash. Yeah, small stuff like forks and spoons, and broken pieces of weapons. That cluttered the dusty attic. Did you get all that stuff? I inquired. The raven nodded, with a hint of pride. Cool. Cool. Alright? I chuckled as I took a deep breath, taking in the old smell of the room as I noticed something that is spamming my mind with red flags. Something was moving within the shadows of the attic, and by the looks of it, it was big. Do you have any roommates? I inquired, the oddly intelligent raven. Call the raven shook his little head off confirming my suspicions. A low hiss, and the touch of something I didn't exited, sent an involuntary shiver running down my spine. And apparently I was not the only one to get this reaction for my feathery friend was already inside my jacket, peering around nervously through the neck part of my jacket. Heart thumping. I carefully start looking around, seeing the shadow moving around the attic, Hell to the fucking no. I will not be a part of Saw. There is a few things I can't deal with it. Bad food, bad movies and this. I do not deal well with IT type situations. And because of that, I blasted the house with a massive ice spike drawing from the tons of ice outside. My attack made the lurking predator appear. A snake with legs and arms and fangs. Maybe I'm not in the avatar world. But Australia... Now this is more like it. I smiled at the beast for now the fear I had a few seconds ago had vanished. If there was one thing I feared was the unknown. Not knowing who or what is attacking you takes a toll on my mind. Unfortunately for the snake, I knew now. With a loud hiss of anger, the amalgamation rushed at me, its fangs ready to dig deep within my flesh. Too bad for the beast I had faced worst, maybe the test really helped, chop. I said as I dodged and cut the monster head with a single ice blade. Well, that sure was something sorry for your house buddy. I said petting the raven inside my jacket. The raven looked at me, looked at his house, and then looked at the monster, and in the split of a second his expression went from fear, to anger, to admiration. Call. Thanks I guess. I chuckled. It was around noon in the northern water tribe when I finally managed to get to the city, with my new companion, who I have been calling Crowley. The streets around the city were incredibly busy making it hard to see around. But I had finally arrived, so I was happy. Now it was time to find some place to sleep, not that it was hard. I could probably sleep in the snow if I have to, but I rather check for options first. The city was a labyrinth of streets and lanes, with everything or at least the big majority of it being made out of ice. I suppose it's a smart idea to use ice in this area. Around the streets I could see a lot of shops and stalls selling everything imaginable, from fans to carved wooden toys to food and weapons, it was remarkable. Then there were the ice buildings that appeared to be residences, and close to the center, the manors and temples probably where the rich people of this place lived. As I surveyed the area, I saw what I was looking for, an inn, moonlight inn. It seemed to be small, and probably within my economic range. I didn't have much money, and the little I had was given to me by the villagers in the tribe. Moonlight Inn, do you want to try their buddy? I asked my feathery companion, inside my jacket. Cool, Crowley nodded. Alright? I had all the green lights I needed, time to see if I can afford this. 
I sighed as I stepped through the door into the icy interior of the Moonlight Inn. Surprisingly enough, not everything was made out of ice, just the structures. As I was admiring the inn, seeing the small details carved into the ice wall, a nameless inmate approached me. Young man, would you like a table? She offered politely. I looked at the young maid and said, I would actually like to inquire about a room. I can help you with that. The maid smiled as she guided me to a table. A night is five cooper. But if you stay a week, the nights go down to three coopers each. Huh, and I had five silver. Why in the hell did the villagers in the tribe gave me so much money? Not that I was complaining, but heck, why? I would like to stay a month. Is there a discount for that? The maid hung deep in thought. How about this, a silver a month, and we give Ad a meal a day, and a weekly laundry service. Does that sound fair? See, negotiation works when you know the price and value of things. You can't negotiate if you don't know jack shit of the product. But ignorance was not going to stop me. Two meals a day, for me and my companion, and we have a deal. Him you drive a hard bargain, but sure. The nameless maid smiled. Well, now that the housing situation was fixed, it was time to rest. Well, I'm super tired. Can I get my room? Sure, give me a minute. The maid nodded. As the maid left, I started to pet Crowley as I reminded myself I was here to learn water bending properly. After that, well, I had no idea what I wanted to do. But at the very least, I would have the power to defend myself. Here you go. The maid said, giving a key that had a little tag that said, ah, room ah. I inquired trying to make sure I understood. Yes, the maid nodded, now for the payment. She added, extending her hand. Oh yes. I chuckled, giving her the silver coin. Here you go, terrific. The maid giggled, enjoy your stay. People here sure are lively, how can anyone keep that charade when in times of war? It really shocks me. But I suppose it's better to be happy than angry and sad all the time. Though that would be more realistic for me. I will. I smiled. My room was fairly simple. I had a bed, a wooden floor and a mirror. That was it. But it served its purpose. A place for me to sleep. Are you comfortable buddy? I inquired as I saw Crowley jumping in the bed. Cool. The excited raven ignored me as he kept on jumping on the bed. And I couldn't help but smile at the sight. I was an animal lover I mean. I think I was on the normal version of Earth. Some of the amalgamations I have found here are unlovable. But in general. I always liked animals, and because of that I always wanted to understand them, like in a deeper meaning, and with Crowley, I kinda felt the little guy was able to understand anything I said, and that alone was refreshing. Alright, you keep on jumping. I chuckled. Sakura the nameless made POV a tribal kid. We don't get those often around here, his clothes and lack of knowledge about the prices was adorable. One silver a month. I almost hugged the brat for how adorably stupid he was, one silver didn't even cover the night here. But well... I have a weak heart for kids like him. Good thing, I'm the owner, Rumar is paying one silver, give him three meals a day, for him and his raven, another stray. The chef, Roku inquired. Yes, yeah, so, I narrowed my eyes, it's getting out of my pocket, you still get your pay. I know, I know, but it's not a wise business model, Roku shrugged. Let Miss Sakura be, the head maid smiled. Didn't he close the deal for two meals though? I know, but well, you know me, I smiled. I, I, the guard laughed. Before falling into the world of slumber, I traced a line in the air with my fingers. I had some goals I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to be the best waterbender. I wanted to be the strongest bloodbender. And most importantly, I wanted to find Iroh and have some tea with him. Yeah, those are some good goals I can live with that. I surveyed the streets of the Northern Water Tribe, asking where I could find Paku. And I had yet to find someone that knew or wanted to tell me. As I walked the snow beneath me squeaked as someone put his hand on my shoulder. I turned and looked, wondering who it was, finding a large man with long hair and a rugged bearded face. He had the typical attire I had soldiers wear, with a blue headband tied on his right arm. The man's menacing expression immediately put me on edge. So, are you the kid asking for Master Paku? Inquired the man. His voice was rough and had a threatening tone to it as his hand clenched in a tight fist. Yes, I answered, not backing down. Though deep down I knew, the man standing in front of me, was vastly superior in water bending, and that I had no chance of defeating him, at least for now. Why? Inquired the man, gripping my shoulder with enough strength to make me flinch a bit, and it was clear to me now, this man was a bully. I knew how to tell when someone was simply looking for trouble, and this man was only looking to fight maybe overcompensating for something. Why else would he want to beat a kid? That's my business, I said. It mine now, said the man, as he glared at me. Well good luck finding out. I didn't mind answering questions. Heck if this idiot had done his job better. He would have known I was looking for Paku to learn waterbending. But I simply don't allow bullies to push me around even if they can beat the crap out of me. Follow me, 
said the man, after giving a long scrutinizing look, knowing I really had no chance of winning. I decided to do as he said, as I found a way to escape, and so I followed him as he led me up some stairs in a building nearby. As soon as my foot touched the first step, I felt ice forming beneath my feet, and instinctively jumped backwards to avoid the spike of ice that had formed. Huh, so you couldn't wait to kill me on a private spot, I'm flattered. I said, taking my stance, if I was going to die, I would go down fighting. Not bad, said the man, with a smile. God, please tell me he is not the Hazoka of this universe. I need an adult. I muttered. I am an adult, said the man, with a confused look. Do you want to meet Master Paku? Yes or no, he offered. Pointing at the ice spike, I chuckled. I was already on edge with you before. Now well, turn that to eleven. Wise, never trust anyone blindly, said the man, as he pointed to the roof above us. Where a man with a bored expression was sitting. He was the one that attacked you, to see if you had any talent, and if I didn't, I asked. Oh calm down kid, I only solidified the spear after you dodged it, said the man in the roof with a low chuckle. Lying bastard I felt the ice forming, he wanted to hurt me. Well, Akira, you have two options here, you either confront the crazy duo, and die, or you try to play along play along it is, oh I see. I sighed, pretending to be relieved. So you want to meet Master Paku? Inquired the man once again. Yes, I nodded. Going back to following the man, he led me to a corridor inside the building, that in the end had one single door. The man nodded at me to go in, and taking a deep breath I slid open the door wide. A cleanly shaven man old man sitting on a blue sky cushion on the ice cold floor, and it didn't take another look to confirm I was standing in front of Paku. Though he was missing his trademark goatee and moustache. Come in, Akira, Paku said pleasantly, gesturing to another cushion. Please have a seat. A while Paku spoke in a calm and pleasant manner. I knew he wasn't asking me. He was ordering me. I heard you were looking for me, asked Paku. Yes, I nodded cautiously. Why? inquired Paku. Well, I want to learn I want to be the best waterbender to have ever lived. I answered trying to sell my case. Paku looked me with a very slight smile. Where are you from, Akira? Damn it, my one weakness. A background check. From the Partis clan, 50 miles away from here. Let's hope they don't send someone there then again. The tribe people said I was part of them. So who knows? Very well, Paku smiled, standing up his cushion. I shall teach you how to waterbend. But for me to do so, you would have to be part of the military. Is that something you are interested in? Do I get paid? I asked. Yes, answered Paku with slight amusement on his face. Can I leave any time I want to? I asked. Yes, though you have to let your superiors know one year in advance you are retiring, clarified Paku. All right, I'm in. Well, today was a rollercoaster of emotions, but in the end, I had managed to do what I had come to do, finding a real master that would help me achieve the highs I was aiming for. Very well, said Paku as his amused smile vanished from sight, turning into a stern expression. I want to see you tomorrow at 4 a.m., in the training grounds is that clear? Yes sir, I nodded, soon realizing I had no idea where that was, so, I have no idea where that is I added. Then good luck, and just to be clear, I will punish you if you arrive late, Paku added with a frightening look. Roger that. I smiled as I mentally added a new thing to do in my head, find the damn training ground, or face the unknown consequences. It took me 8 hours to find the damn training yard. I hate this city. But at least know I would know where to go. But like every world, once an enemy its defeat a new one arises. And mine was waking up early. Without an alarm clock. How was your day? Inquired Sakura as she served me a big plate of food for dinner. You seem tense. Well, I did find Paku. And I got into his class I guess. But I have to wake up at 4am. And well, I suck at waking up early. I answered with a sigh. Well, I could wake you up if that helps. Offered Sakura with a smile. I close my shift every day around 3, so is right around my schedule. I hugged Sakura, as I said, you are an angel, and to think I once thought the name Sakura was cursed. EFFF hardly, but thanks, Sakura chuckled. Four months later my training with Paku proved to be difficult. He didn't accept anything but perfection in every aspect, from hand-to-hand -hand combat to basic water bending moves. He also had a disdain with my fighting style, saying that I relied a little too much on my ice bending and that at times water alone could produce, if not the same result, something vastly more devastating. He was right, water pressure was if controlled, able to cut through almost anything. But for me, ice was easier to form and mold to my liking, from blades to spears even spikes, ice was a simpler concept for me to accept and utilize. Nonetheless, Paku was my master and I had to obey him. He knew much more than me in this ancient art. Other than that, I have come to notice water bending is not that hard, at least perhaps for me. I don't need Paku to explain the moves more than once. It just comes naturally. 
It was almost as if I had born with this power. I was so confident in my talent that I had a feeling. I would best most soldiers within the northern water in months. Blood bending. On the other hand, I, I was having problems with it every full moon I would try to feel it. But I just couldn't find a connection. Perhaps I needed to be more in cinch with the element. Before moving into more advanced techniques. You never cease to amaze me. Packer commented. Thanks, I bow respectfully. Talent like yours is not a common thing. Paku smiled before his face turned into a deep frown. Don't let talent blind you. Talent can only take you so far, I won't. I nodded. Good, now tomorrow, come early. Paku ordered as he calmly walked towards the next bender to correct their form or movement. Oh, yeah, jealousy was a thing for me now. People hated me here, apparently. Paku does not give compliments often. In fact, some of the guards say he just simply hates to give any. But with me, every now and then, he would praise me for my hard work. Well, time to go home and take a bath. I muttered as I walked out of the class. Having no reason to stay, my literal shift had ended two hours ago. As I walked home, I found myself lost in the city somehow I had taken a wrong turn. Which is weird, I haven't done that ever. Push pull voices soft voices echoed in my head, like tears falling into a well. Making a pleasant sound, that guided further into the city. I was deeply confused as to what was pulling me towards the city. It was an intoxicating feeling of euphoria, almost primal. My body craved to know. I wanted to know. This is crazy. I muttered as I continued to follow the voices. That were probably only in my head. Push pull the more I walked, the clearer the voices became. The closer I got to the source of the sound, the more I felt like the waves of the sea were pushing me. The royal palace. Why push pull once again the voices echoed. And I knew they were coming from the palace. Two words, two basics and normally mundane words. And yet right now, they were so vexing, that it hurt. I will definitely end up in jail. I sighed as I climbed the wall to the palace making sure not to make any noises. The last thing I wanted was the fucking chief of this city, labeling my ass as a public enemy. Looking over the wall, I noticed that the guard keeping an eye was asleep, no wonder. This city was so easy to raid in the TV show. I muttered as I jumped to the other side, landing as silently as a cat, and my friends thought my gymnastics classes were a waste ha. Huh? Jokes on them. Push pull goddammit. I'm coming. Stop wait is this a new way of teasing I kinda feel violated now. Anyhow. I still had to keep my guard up in case one of the patrols around the castle appeared. And right I was to be careful. The place was infested with guards. Though the majority was sleeping seriously. Where is their supervisor? No. Akira just take the luck the universe is giving you. Push pull. I know I muttered. Stopping mid-sentence now I knew where I was in the spirit oasis. I risk my life and freedom for two over-glorified rolls of sushi. I whispered. They are a guides. The voice of a little girl said. With timid expression, she was wearing a very expensive dress. And her hair was white. Her complexion showed she was around 9 to 10 years old, maybe 11. Hi, please don't call your dad. I muttered with a weak smile. I won't you smiled. I know you came here because you heard them. I always hear them. They are always dancing, pulling and pushing the waves of the sea, entangled in a dance of balance. Isn't that beautiful? I get why you can hear them but me. I inquired, mostly to myself. I don't know, maybe Paki would know. You offered. I very much appreciate my life, so no thank you. I chuckled, making you chuckled as well. Maybe I can arrange my father to bring you here. We are almost the same age he will think I want a playdate, you offered, and she was right it could work. I was almost 14, and she was probably 11 I was still of an age, where playing was not seen as stupid. That would be awesome. I smiled, nodding. Great. So what is your name and where do you live? You asked, trying to hide her excitement. I live in a hotel near the leather distribution district, and my name is Akira. I smiled, still not completely in love with my name. Perhaps that would change in the future, or perhaps I would change my name. Azen and Posidon seemed like awesome options. I just wish I remembered my real name. Without it all of this feels like playing pretend. See you soon Akira. If you want to stay longer get in tree. The guards never approach the spirits too much, you said, as she ran back to her room happy. Poor girl must have zero friends. Push pull yes. I know you push she pulls. I muttered as I climbed the tree, and while I sounded tired of their repetitive routine, I was actually hypnotized by their dance. It was unique. Since that fateful day, when the voices of the spirits reached me and pulled me into their zone, I have gone to the spirit oasis every day. It was relaxing and educational. Seeing them taught me more about the nature of waterbending. I had to know when to push and when to pull. Basically it meant that I had to go with the flow of the battle, using my enemy's own strength against them. It also meant that I didn't have to force the water to obey me. I had to merely guide the water to help, like the wind guides the tides. I just had to be more in tune with the element. Now this was easier said than done. Humans are by default beings that like to dominate, beings that like to control. 
some more than others, and to just let go of something so primal, it's hard. Meaning I was having a hard time with it, but the results were worth it, for the few times I was one with the water my bending was exponentially better. It was outstanding. You have improved a lot this past few days, Paco acknowledged, very impressive. I have a good master, the last thing I wanted Paco to know, was that I had been seeking into the royal castle the last few weeks, fuck no, flattery. Hum, have you done anything? Paco inquired. No, I answered. Very well, keep your secrets. Woke Paco sighed. Oh, I forgot the chief asked for you. Something about a playdate with the princess, he added. Really? Time to play dumb. Yes. Paku nodded. Your playdate starts in two hours, so finish your training. I didn't say yes. Not that I was going to say no. But still, it was nice to know I had an option. Unfortunately for you you are part of the military of this tribe, meaning the chief can order you around, meaning this is not an invitation is an order to play with his daughter. Paku said with something reminiscent of a smile on his face. The joys of being part of the army. Oh yeah. I forgot I signed a contract with them for the duration of my training. I am part of their army. Oh, well haha. Ha. Then I suppose I better get there in time. A piece of advice make sure to make the little princess happy. The chief is overprotective of the little princess and well you can see where this is going. Paki warned as he walked away. Don't worry, I will do my best. I nodded wondering if befriending you was a good idea. Northern Water Tribe Palace for the first time in weeks I was on the Northern Water Tribe Palace legally. I dare say it looked better when I wasn't avoiding the guards and stuff. Welcome to my home Akira. Chief Armut greeted me with a plain expression. My daughter specifically requested your presence here. Now my question is why. He added with a frown. Well let's see what lie do I use ha. Huh? I know. I saw here one day and said hi and she said hi back. I smiled. She asked my name. And here we are. Chief Armut hummed seemingly deep in thought. I see. Well have a good time. He then looked at me. Make sure to treat her with the utmost respect. She is your princess, remember that? Ha huh, odd, that instead of being threatening was funny, perhaps I'm stronger than him already, meaning he can't intimidate me. Akira, you greeted me with a hug and a vibrant smile, as if we knew each other more than one day. This man will start questioning shit, ain't he? So one day, Chief Anuk inquired. There it is, yes, I nodded. Let's go to the spirit oasis. You offered pulling me by the shirt like a rag doll. She was surprisingly strong for an 11-year-old girl. Remember to not disturb the spirits. Arnok smiled as his daughter dragged me across the castle. Spirit oasis. That was close, you muttered. What? I asked as I cleaned my pants from the dirt they had accumulated during my brief time as a broom. Daddy he was about to ask too many questions I forgot today was supposed to be the second day we met you sighed. Oh yeah that? I chuckled, well it all ended well, yeah, you smiled. Push pull. They don't get tired of repeating the same thing is truly impressive every day. They would do and say the same. Well only when you are near. You shook her head. They are usually quiet or say other stuff. I think it's because they want you to learn something. So they wanted me to learn something. I suppose that makes more sense. I nodded. So have you learned something? You asked with excitement. Waterbending seems so cool too bad I can't do it. If we found one massive tiger or lion turtle. Not exactly sure it would be possible. Then again she was half spirit, perhaps she already could but never had the chance. Have you tried? No you looked at me as if I was crazy. Just saying you are partly spirit. So who knows I added. How did you? You questioned. I have been quite a while in this oasis I gathered a thing or two about them and you. And how you got the connection, I answered lying like a beast. I was getting better at it. Oh I see, so you think I can water bend because of it. You asked with a hint of excitement. I'm not sure, but in theory it should be possible you have a part of one of the spirits that control the water around the world I answered. It should in theory be possible. You are right it should be possible. You said with determination. That's the spirit. I chuckled as her reaction and my clever pun. And you will be my teacher. You smiled say what now? Hold on your horses I am still learning Paki would prove to be better at teaching than me. Why in the hell would she pick me, when she had thousands of other options? Well I want you, you are learning from Paku and the spirits. So if someone can teach me as you, you said with determination, besides this way I can keep it a secret from daddy well. I don't have much of an option, not only I ignited her desire to learn, but she was my only legal access to the spirit oasis, very well. But it will be once a week, so that I can train two times a week. And I'll tell daddy I had the most fun ever, oh ho 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 ho. This little girl was blackmailing me. I like this version of her too bad they didn't show her more manipulative side on the show. It would have been fun seeing Sokka dealing with it. Very well. But I picked the days. I chuckled. Deal. You hugged me. It seems that I now have a student of my own. What an interesting situation. Now I wonder if she will truly learn how to waterbend in theory. She should be able she is part spirit. 
and that part is one of the two spirits that control the moon. So by all means she should be able to do so. Poor Zhao, if she learns how to bend a ha things are getting interesting. One year later after one year, my training was complete, Paki himself gave me the title of master the youngest master of this generation. Nice title to be honest. I had skipped many years of traditional training, especially since the spirits were somewhat helping me, of course. I still had yet to make all the advances I wanted in the arts of water bending. Blood bending kept proving to be difficult for me, and even after a year and a half of training, I had yet to make any advances on the forbidden art, though I had made other advances that while not as powerful were very much useful among them. Water sense. This skill enables me to detect the vibrations in the particles of water around me, helping me to perceive objects, people, and other aspects of their environment essentially acting as sonar. But through all the water in the atmosphere, basically this skill was inspired in Toth, and boy it had proven to be helpful, because unlike Earth, water was everywhere. Meaning I was able to see without seeing so much more. My ice-bending powers had also increased in power exponentially, as I was now able to freeze to the death by touching them, freezing all the water inside their bodies, and dropping their temperature to absolute zero. This of course was only possible, thanks to my water sense, that helped me locate all the water particles inside a human body. Though this brought up the question of how in the hell wasn't I able to blood bend, when I was able to feel all the water inside a person. Maybe it was a mental block I had on the art itself. As for my healing abilities, they had stagnated a lot, with Paki not allowing me to as he said waste time with such things, meaning I was far behind on my healing abilities, compared to the rest of my arsenal. You are now officially a master, I am proud of you, Paku said with his signature emotionless face. The youngest of this generation, am I the youngest overall? I inquired. No, but those that graduated younger than you had instruction since they were toddlers. You could say you are the first one to complete their training in a year and a half, Paku answered. I see, I nodded. The chief wants to hire you, as part of the royal guard. Paku informed me with a somewhat proud tone. He is impressed by your talent and your relationship with the young princess. You, my one friend here besides dear old Sakura. I understand, I might accept but I don't like the idea of being a guard or shrugged. It's a great honor, you are basically skipping hundreds of ranks. Paku scolded. So those guards in the castle are royal guards? I inquired, for me they didn't seem impressive at all. No, they are just guards, the royal guard is special only beneath the generals, and the chief, Paku clarified. I once was one, but I am now a general. Huh, and what does being a royal guard entitles? I asked with curiosity. Well, you are for now part of the elite force that is tasked with the important mission of keeping the royal family alive, Paku answered, you would also be the first line of defense in case anything happens. How many royal guards are they right now? It all seemed cool and all, but something was off, for example, where was the royal guard when Zhao attacked, perhaps they disbanded. One, Paku answered with a sigh, the chief disbanded the last members a decade ago, but you seem to have changed his decision, so I would be the only one, I asked with a chuckle, for now yes. I suppose that would give you the title of the Royal Guard Captain. Paku chuckled. Much to my surprise, two promotions in one day. I dare say you are breaking records by the second, very funny. But that seems to be a lot of work for a single human being. I sighed. Your salary would multiply by a lot, Paku said, take it as an opportunity. I know you want to travel the world this way. You get to save money to do so. Well alright. I nodded. Having extra money was not bad. And I would get to have a title to flex around. It was a win-win situation for everyone. Northern Water Palace. I am overjoyed that you have accepted my proposal, Chief Anuk said with a smile. I arched an eyebrow at that, wondering what had him so happy. Well, Master Paki can be very persuasive when he wants to be. I can, Paki smiled, Jesus seeing him showing emotions was terrifying. Well to be honest I was reluctant to create the Royal Guard again, but after what you did with you well. I knew what I had to do, Chief Arnook smiled after what I did with you. Oh no, sorry you mumbled an apology at me. You told them, I half shouted, to think you had a student all this time in secret, and that it was the princess I can't say I approve, Paku smirked, God stop, don't smile. While it was a protocol you helped us realize my sweet little moon had talent for water bending, something that you helped bring forth, Chief Arnook smiled. Do you accept being part of the royal guard as its captain for however long you wish to stay in it? Well let's list the cons and pros, for pros I will get an immensely bigger salary. I get to be with the spirits almost 24 sevenths, and I get to train you without sneaking around for the cons well. They will probably expect things from me fuck it. I'm in, yes, I accept, very good. Chief Anuk smiled with joy. I will get the paperwork done. Welcome aboard. If I might add something, Paku interrupted. I think it is best if the training of the young lady is continued by Master Yugoda. She's a master in the healing arts, while Akira is better suited for teaching combat. You misogynistic pig. I think I'm doing a great job. 
I said through gritted teeth. Fighting is not for a lady, Paki replied with a stern look. I want to keep training with Akira, the 12-year-old girl said with an angry face. I'll discuss this later with my wife, as Paku says fighting is not for a lady, Chief Amok sighed, as he looked at his daughter, and that is final. Yes daddy, you said, clenching her little fists. Very well, I nodded, though I knew very well. I had broken many laws up until today teaching her was just going to be a new one and besides with her learning how to heal I would be able to learn by her. How to do so better, it was actually better for me. Now, go and rest we will have your things here by tomorrow morning, Chief Anuk informed me. As you wish, I nodded, it seemed today was my last day with Sakura. I wonder how Crowley is gonna react he loves Sakura. Or her food I can't tell. The life as part of the royal guard was. As expected, absolutely boring my duties were to command the guards. And keep an eye for the royal family. Mostly you. I challenge you to a duel. A guy around my age shouted. He I had no idea who he was. You are. I sighed, knowing all too well. What was this all about? My new title. Some people were trying to show they were superior to me. And more qualified. And well... I had graciously kicked their asses to prove I am probably the strongest member of the tribe, and while Paku was stronger than me in conventional bending, I was league about him and well the unconventional areas of my bending. I am the Great Han. Oh that guy alright let's fight I sighed in a bleed tone. Here I go. Water slap with a yawn and a soft movement of my hand, a big water hand protruded from the ground, slapping Han to the ground like a mosquito. I won what a surprise, is he dead? Someone in the audience asked. No, idiots are hard to kill. I chuckled. Was that necessary? You inquired as she approached me. With him? Absolutely besides, only a crushing defeat stops them. I answered with a shrug. I suppose, you sighed. So how was the healing class? I asked as I started to escort the young princess back to the castle, leaving the comatose Han 10 meters on the ground. Is good. I think it suits me, you answered with uncertainty. Is that your opinion? Or that of the tribe? I asked. A bit of both. While I love what you teach me I don't think I have the heart to hurt anybody so healing is better. You sighed, and she was right she was too good of a person to harm someone. Hum, you still need to learn how to defend yourself otherwise bad things can happen. I wasn't going to be around the tribe forever. One day she would have to defend herself. Isn't that why I have you? You smiled. I won't be around forever. I answered, not wanting her to make illusions of me staying. One day I will go out and explore the world, and that day you'll be without me. Maybe I can come with you. You muttered, hiding her face under her white hair. Ha, huh, well, that was unexpected. I don't see why not I could use a good healer. You don't mind that and the tribe chasing you. You asked in shock. You, I'll be honest with you besides Baku. There isn't anyone here strong enough to even make me try I chuckled. And besides, the only crime here would be their ignorance. Or their refusal to let you go. I think I was too rash to ask you that, you sighed. Then stay I'm fine with either option. I smiled, and for some reason this made her mad. So you don't care if I go or not good to know. You hissed, walking fast with the intention of leaving me behind. I don't understand that girl sometimes. Why are you even mad though I just said I would respect your decision, and besides, we were talking hypothetical cases. One of the best parts of not having almost anything to do, is that you can sneak into the healer's classroom at night to steal some of their scrolls. Pack you FTK with you. I will learn how to heal maybe I can improve the healing I muttered as I checked for every scroll, making sure I had the copies for all of them. Many in the future will wonder how I got to be strong enough to stomp the avatar in power well. This will be listed among the list of why. I was going to break down what it meant to be a waterbender, making new things, new styles I was going to be a legend among waterbenders. Is someone there? I was an amazing waterbender. But apparently I was a terrible thief which was odd, considering I had been sneaking for months to the castle anyway. Time to escape. Before the voice could even repeat the question, I jumped out of the window, and flew to the ceiling of the house. One of the many tricks I had learned, you see to fly with water is very easy. All you need is to put some water in all the equilibrium points of the body. I mean the most important ones, feet, hands, hips, and neck, and of course, water bend that water to fly around. The trick is to bend the water with the mind alone. That took some time. Mem M, I could have sworn I heard someone. Oh shit, that was close. I better get out, I sighed, as I flew away. Fee water healing is way more complicated than traditional bending. I mean holy shit. The precision needed to use it I mean properly is stupid. How can Paki think this shit is easy? Does he only think that because the healers are all women? So you stole all the scrolls, you asked with an annoyed expression. Core, Crowley core, trying to be part of the conversation. Knowledge, I stole knowledge and all the scrolls I took are copies so, at least. I cost the school like 500 silver. I shrugged, besides I will donate them the money. 
I suppose if you donate the money it will cost to get those back is not really a crime right? You sighed. Don't worry. I will give them more than enough money to replace these scrolls and buy something new. I reassured her. To think a royal guard captain would be a criminal, you chuckled. Only a criminal mastermind like me can't stop other criminals. I joined in the joke. I suppose you laughed, so can I read the scrolls? I want others to think I'm a genius at this. I looked at her and with a smile. I said, welcome to the dark side, doing my best to imitate Palpatine's voice. Okay. You said getting a scroll. Paku POV today a very odd and specific crime had been committed during the night. Someone had stolen a copy for each scroll in the arts of healing. I don't know why someone would steal those you go to muttered. I didn't know why, but I had a feeling I knew who did it. Whoever it was it wanted to learn water healing really bad a soldier added. It was Akira wasn't it? Let me know how much it will cost to replace them. I knew he wanted to learn, but this was borderline stupid. But one thing was for sure I was going to discipline that boy, the hard way. Being a guard was boring, incredibly dull. I did nothing to fight nothing in general, but at least I was learning a lot and making a lot of money. Let's put a quote on learning healing was very hard. You have to be very very precise with your movements and water control. But the most important part, one that you always have to take into account, is the energy you put on the water you were going to use to heal. It was like math all over again. Akira, Paki greeted, with an angry face, can I have a word with you? I eyed the old man. Before taking a deep breath, he figured out my little crime, and was about to try and take me to prison. Sure, I nodded reluctantly. Some scrolls have been going missing, do you have anything to do with that? Paku asked. But his tone hinted he was blaming me. And why would I steal some scrolls I shot back with a glare? Is this how you pay me? Paku spat in anger. I taught you. And this is how you say thanks. It seems you already have your answer. I chuckled bitterly. But I couldn't care less you didn't do me a favor. After all, you expected something in return. I spat. So you admit it? Paku asked, narrowing his eyes at me. Do you really care for my answer? I laughed bitterly. No, Paku answered, sending a wave of water at me to hinder me that I blocked with a dome of water of my own around me. A criminal can't be part of the royal guard. You forbid me from learning. I think the real criminal here is you. I counter as I proceeded two shot razor sharp discs at the old man that simply decided to redirect them. And your reaction is to fight poetic, isn't it? I chuckled bitterly. You went against my orders to learn something you don't need. Paku stated as he melted the ice beneath my feet in their intent to freeze me. You stole. I did. I nodded, freezing the ground beneath me simply because I had no other choice. I asked you a thousand times. I sighed, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? No, Paku answered, you can't beat me. I stated, much to his shock, if this battle were to continue in the traditional way. Yes, you would win, but that is not going to happen. I was confident my skills were enough to take on the orthodox old man. I was a proud outbox thinker. Overconfidence is unbecoming of a warrior, Paku calmly stated. It is, I nodded as I started to melt the ice around us. But I'm not the one suffering from that dilemma. By this point the ice I had started to melt was now a deep and thick mist that covered the area. You are. It will take more than blinding me to win. Paku scoffed. Perhaps. I hummed as I slowly started to cover my legs, arms and neck with water. Who knows? Huh? Paku muttered, startled noticing that the mist just continued to get thicker and thicker. How can you fight if you can't see? He who can only strike what he sees is a second-rate warrior. I chuckled, don't underestimate me. I commented as I used my water sense to locate him, while I created a water web to attack him. Paku dodged the first attack by a few inches, but the second attack connected, sending him flying a few meters back, he retaliated, pushing the mist off the area, but that allowed me to trap his feet, freezing him on the ground. Hum! Paku grumbled. How about this? I smiled as I started to gather all the water around us, creating hundreds of icicles. Can you dodge? Or do you submit? If you think I am defeated, you are wrong child, Paki growled, with eyes devoid of emotion. Stop. The voice of Chief Anuk boomed around us, stopping Paku and me right in our tracks. Chief Anuk, Paku bowed. Chief, I greeted him absently. Can someone explain to me, why were you two fighting to the death? The chief growled, demanding an answer. The current head of the royal guard is a criminal, Paki answered. He stole the scrolls from the healing academy, and he must be prosecuted for his crimes. Is that true? Chief Anuk inquired as he looked at me. Yes, 
I nodded, he forbade me from learning the arts of healing, and I took upon myself to fix that. A warrior that can't save a life is nothing but a weapon, and I am not a weapon, you could have asked the head of the healing department for the scrolls, the chief stated. Once he knew of my interests he forced everyone not to give me the knowledge I desired. I chuckled bitterly, pathetic, my last bit made Packy glare at me. I understand the chief side, but a crime is a crime, regardless of the reason. Though you had a good reason, I started to laugh. Oh, well I quit. I smiled at them, take the royal position, and shove it up Paku's ass. I'm done with everyone here. I got what I wanted. I'll take my leave. I haven't decided if you will receive punishment or not, the chief argued. Like I said, I'm done regardless of your decision. I have outgrown this place. I stated once again, with a bored expression. I didn't want to be in the military anyway. Too many rules, for my liking. I chuckled, now is up to you if I leave as a criminal or a friend, the chief looked at me, and Paku, fear building up his eyes. I will allow you to learn anything you desire, and will modify your rank to suit your needs. But don't leave he was desperate, now that is something I didn't expect to see, and apparently Paku himself was confused. Why? I asked. Many reasons. The chief sighed, you are the first real friend you has you are a prodigy in the arts of waterbending, and most importantly you were called by the spirits. The last part shocked me, how in the hell did he know you? Or did you really think our guards are that bad? I just told them to let you pass. The chief chuckled, if the spirits wanted you here, it must be for a reason, so please, don't leave. I looked at the man, that had until now been nothing but a good person to me inside, very well. But I want to out of Paku's control, meaning he can't boss me around, and I want to be able to reject orders meaning. If I see something is stupid, I am not forced to obey, deal, the chief nodded. If that's what you want I won't complain, Paku said with a sigh all signs of anger gone. I look forward to seeing what the spirits see in you needless to say. My relationship with Paku went from friendly to downright enemies after a fight. He respected the chief orders, but hated the idea of me breaking the rules, and that I was out of his control. With the chief being technically the only one capable of ordering me, and even that capability was questionable, for as of now I was like a freelancer, making money, but with no obligation to them whatsoever. You was angry at me for me while, which didn't bother me at all, as I was focusing the majority of my time on my training, bloodbending and healing bending. With healing bending slowly but surely getting better, the trick was meditating more, being more in touch with my spiritual side. Quite cliche. But hey it worked. As for bloodbending, well I'm happy to see it finally happened. I was officially a bloodbender, but I was so far only able to use it during the full moon, and I was nowhere near of a level of skill where I could use it in a fight. But hey I managed to force an ice rat to submission, and while my progress during these last months has been anything but amazing, I was happy. Oh great my water sense is tingling fuck me sideways, the old bastard is coming. Akira, Paki greeted, as he entered the spirit oasis. Damn it. Leave, I said with my eyes closed. This old bastard was not going to stop my training. I am free to roam the palace, Paku said with an amused tone. Is there a purpose for this unpleasant visit? I asked with a tired groan. I came here to demand a duel, Paku stated. While glaring at me, three months ago the chief saved you, and I can't move on until I have personally punished you. Well this was perfect. Let's go. I jumped out of my spot. I will enjoy kicking your ass. I smirked. Overconfidence such a shame. You had so much talent. Back aside. Too much talk from someone that belongs in a museum. I chuckled bitterly. Our duel was an event for the tribe. The oldest prodigy against the youngest prodigy. A battle between generations. It was such an event. That some of the benders around had built us an arena. Once they knew we were fighting. And people were selling food and shit. We even had someone as the referee. Aka the chief who had reluctantly accepted after all he didn't want us to fight. The chief's voice boomed out into the audience, giving us the green lights. Let the battle begin. The chief had barely finished his sentence when Paku instantly shot a barrage of water billied at me. With a quick sigh at the old man, I created a thick wall of ice, which allowed me to block the attacks as I parried the old master water whip. That circled my walls with one of my own. I continued to block the old master's next two blows as well by redirecting the water he was launching at me, before attempting to counter with what I call an ice uppercut. That makes an ice spike protrude from the ground at my target's location. This move ultimately failed when the bald decrepit bastard leaped backwards avoiding my attack by a few inches, deciding it was time to start using my own style, instead of the conventional style of bending. I exhaled as I stared at the old man with a wide smile. Paki glared at me as he quickly continued his assault, failing to even land one of his shot's clothes, showing why water sensing is my favorite ability helping me to predict his moves before he even used them. Do you need a nap? 
I can stop if you want, I asked as I casually continued to dodge. This comment threw Paco off balance, with slight rage filling his core. I will teach you to respect your elders. Respect is earned. I smiled bitterly at him as I started to attack him with an assault of ice spikes, Paku while graciously countering. It was clear he was having a hard time, so he opted to shake the entire arena with a rather unique attack. That would have been a real nice move to end me, if I had fought him by his rules. Seeing the attack was undodgeable in such a finite space I opted to fly out of the way. Paku of course was taken aback by this skill which I had used to dodge his finishing move. Oh, yeah, I can fly? I winked at everyone at the arena, just to spite Paku. The best part was none of them knew how I was doing it. You see, during these last few months, I had well improved my technique instead of using a lot of water. I would now freeze the soles of my shoes, my belt, my gloves and collar to flight, bending the ice, and making this technique for the naked eye a mystery. With a smirk I snapped my fingers gathering all the water in the air, creating hundreds of projectiles. And without wasting any more time I was back on the offensive with a barrage of powerful ice bullets, each one being even bigger than the last raining on him by the hundreds. The old man was quickly becoming overwhelmed by the raw force on my attacks, and had begun to solely focus on his defense. Sadly for him, this was never going to end, for my bullets were nearly limitless, making his decision under the onslaught of incoming bullets a bad one. You know, I said with a smirk, I owe some of this power to you. A decision I am coming to regret, Paku managed to reply, gasping for air, as he struggled to move with a bleeding leg. Too late for it though, I smiled. As I continued with my deadly reign, Paku was at this point out of breath, and could hardly attack at all. I knew what the old man was trying to do now. He wanted to fight an opening, and I was going to exploit that, and with that in mind, I intentionally left my backside wide open. And the old dog, in his desperation, took the bait, and instead of managing to deliver an attack, he was sent flying to the walls of the arena as I planted a huge water fist to the twice as big as his body to his left side. In the shattered ice that once was a wall, the old master lay defeated, gasping for air. His eyes meeting mine in anger and another emotion I couldn't quite pick just before falling unconscious, declaring me the winner. I hope this is the end of all this. I sighed, flying down to the arena. The audience was mute with how things had gone. I had defeated what they thought to be the best water-bending master of all ice. And I had done it with style. That kid is a monster. Yes, yes I am. Three year later it has been three years since my little duel with my old master. Where I had proved I reigned supreme above him. After that fateful day I had gained a title that well. I had mixed feelings about it. The Demon of the North, this very unique and cool title, made everyone but a few individuals in the tribe fear me. They couldn't comprehend how I was able to beat Paku, a master with decades of experience. What they failed to see, was that Paku was decades out of his prime, and I was a bit more creative when it came to fighting. I'm not gonna lie, the fear they had was both useful and hilarious for me, giving me a lot of benefits. For one no one had the balls to bother me during training, besides Sakura, you, Crowley and the Chief, of course. But, they were the only ones that knew. I wasn't really a monster purse. I was more of a tamed animal if you would, that if poked too much will snap. But if left alone, will leave you be. But besides them, everyone avoided me like the plague, and boy how I loved that. Though my mind would usually wonder, why was I still here? It had been years since I mastered the arts of healing, and by this point my bloodbending was combat ready. So why was I staying here? What was holding me back? You know the chief will ask you to marry you right? Sakura asked as she entered my room. I don't think so I rolled my eyes, if I remembered correctly she was supposed to be engaged to. God, what was his name? Og alright, I'm just gonna call him asshole. She was supposed to be engaged to Mr. Asshole. Akira you are the strongest warrior in the tribe. By a long shot people want you to stay, and a marriage could potentially ensure that, Sakura sighed. You mean the people that run away from me like I'm the plague? I laughed, what's next? Paku wants to marry me. I joked, but my own joke ended up hurting my very soul. With images of Paku in a wedding dress, scratch that I need bleach now. They fear you yes, Sakura nodded ignoring my joke, putting her hands softly on my back, but they also know you would die for them. When in the hell did I ever, and I mean ever, give that impression? I would die for no one woman. Well, then this entire tribe needs some help reading people. Play it tough. But I know you are a softy under all that macho attitude, Sakura smirked. Maybe, I chuckled while rolling my eyes at her. But I still believe the chief will choose someone else. Wanna bet? Sakura grinned. I chuckled very well. Let's do this. I never say no to a easy bet. I want you to marry my daughter, the chief stated with a wide smile. Damn it. 
Ha! Huh. The booming laugh of Sakura among the people present broke the sound barrier, invading my ears. Damn it I owe that woman a lot of money now, chief. I'm sure you have better options to offer your daughter, like one of the clan kids. You gave me an offended look as if my comment had hurt her somehow. You are the best this tribe has to offer, the chief laughed. I am an orphan with a made up name, and no lands or money to give. I rolled my eyes at him. So, yeah, you are rich and a respected member of the water tribe, the chief refuted. Alright, the idiot really wants me to marry you. So time to use the my secret weapon. If you accept by all means, you was my escape to this marriage thing. Why? Well she hated the idea of marrying someone without knowing them. I don't really want to marry. Father, you answered. I would like to marry by love. And while I love Akira he is like a big brother to me. I hear you sis. I winked at her. But the chief started to panic why was he panicking though? This man was weird. Then wait no longer. For I the great, the annoying asshole with the enormous ego had appeared once again. And unfortunately for him. I had developed an instinct where if I was near one. I would unconsciously attack said asshole. Han dash poor idiot. He didn't even see the water punch. And now he is falling hundreds of meters into the air. I never get tired of that you giggled. Chief, is this about me staying? I asked. Well partly. I mean I thought you guys loved each other. The chief sighed. I won't be leaving anytime soon I sighed. If you promise to stop bothering you with the betrothal thing she will meet the man of her dreams one day. Sokka, I suppose. Fine, the chief nodded in a deflated state. You still owe me some money. Sakura shouted at me. I know. After today's ordeal, I decided to continue practicing the one thing I still wasn't a master at. Bloodbending, yeah, embarrassing. But I have no material to learn from. I'm practically building the art from scratch. Besides, I'm not that bad. I'm able to use completely fine during the full moon. I just need to keep honing my skills with it to the point where I can use it every day. Time to medita dash. But before I could even begin my meditation something shook like a tsunami. My spirit was now trembling, leaving me wondering what. In the world was that the spirits in the oasis felt it too this wave of energy this feeling. There was no doubt. So you finally woke up un. I had no doubts. This wave I had felt was the avatar waking up. There was no other human being capable of releasing such a wave of spiritual energy. It had to be him, and I couldn't lie I was excited, because for some bizarre reason, I wanted to best the avatar in the avatar state, one on one, four elements versus one. Was I going to lose? Probably. I wasn't sure Un in the avatar state was downright terrifying. Not like the sad excuse for avatar state Korra has been, but Un was a monster on that state, and that only made this quest more fun. Alright. I laughed deep down, wondering since when I had become a battle-driven individual. Ages. Akira. 18 to 19, you. 16, Zuko. 16, Sokka. 15, Katara. 14, Azala. 14, Un. 12 to 112. There was no doubt about it. That energy push I felt in the spirit realm was no other than Un, and I couldn't hide it. I was excited at the prospect of kicking his ass. God it seems I have turned into a battle crazy bastard. But I don't care. You seem awfully happy. You commented. Is there any reason why? Maybe a girl. She inquired. Wiggling her eyebrows at me. EFFF. I chuckled. Nope. I just think things will get interesting. Alright. Keep your secret girlfriend secret. You said with a teasing tone. As if I had the time to have a girlfriend. Right now. All I wanted to do was master bloodbending. And perhaps later I would have time for such things. I'll be leaving now. I said, walking out of the room, wondering if maybe it was best for me to go and look for Aang. I'm not exactly one to wait. Don't get mad, I was only teasing, you panicked, at my sudden reaction. I'm not, I said, I just need to get back to my training. Nothing bad, I added with a wink. Oh, okay, you flushed with embarrassment. Now, go and bother someone else. I chuckled, I have things to do. Is that how you treat your best friend slash sister? You asked with a wide smile. Yes, I nodded. I don't even know why I bother with you. You sighed. Just don't. I said, leaving the room once and for all. Training was nowadays my life. It wasn't anything fancy. But I enjoyed it. I had come to enjoy my life as it was now calmer and how could I not I mean, I was still overjoyed with the fact I had a power, a freaking power. And I wanted to be a fucking beast with it. Every day. It was a new experience for me every day I would learn something new about my powers, showing me how stupid the people of this world were. See, water bending was more than a person throwing water at others, and yes while that was the basics of it, it wasn't all. For example, metal bending is not really metal bending, to be precise, it would be earth bending, but on a larger scale. Now many would think, but how? Well, the answer is simple, the earth bender is not bending the metal but the particles of earth within said metal. Reason why they can't bend 100% pure metal. It's impossible. That same rule applies to water bending, meaning as long as something had water on it, 
it was technically speaking bendable. Like for example, poison or acid, making me the first person to use those two among others as weapons. And that was just the tip of the iceberg, and I like the curious fucker I was, had gone deeper and deeper. My skills were so vast now that I doubted many could take me on, probably Iro. But I'm not entirely sure, I never saw the old wise man fight. Things were good for me, and if I had to rate my skills, well, I suppose they would go like this. Water bending master, ice bending master, healing bending expert, blood bending, ah, uh, this one was hard to judge. See the side of blood bending. That focus on hurting others was difficult for me. But the part used to boost my own physical skills well. I was quite good at it. Bloodbending was much more than the show ever showed. With the right mind a bloodbender could be almost immortal. For example, if someone were to cut my wrists, I would be able to stop the bleeding like it was nothing. Eventually my wounds would heal by themselves. Or I could help them with water healing. That or I could make my blood hard. Like steel making my body hard to pierce. The possibilities with this beautiful art were endless, and the stupid of Katara had the art banned in the Legend of Korra. I never understood why well, I did. In the wrong hands, this art was capable of killing anyone. But it didn't matter, as long as I got to learn the art I was happy. Heart's dad. It's okay, I can keep my blood pumping while I heal my heart, my neck. It doesn't matter. Of course, I was not at that level yet, but I was close. I knew that much. Because for me, it was easier to bend my own blood. It was the blood of others where I struggled, at least until a full moon. But I couldn't help but imagine the possibilities once I finally climbed that wall I had found myself in. After all, all I had mastered with this unique power was the defensive part of it. Now the offensive part was much much more enticing, like stopping the flow of blood to the brain or heart, bursting organs boiling or freezing someone's blood. The possibilities were delightfully endless. I couldn't help but wonder what were the limits of this beautiful art. It is either GRR-Han, Pan, I don't remember his name, anyway, initiating water slap, not again. I swear he comes every six months that guy has a death wish. I sighed. He thinks if he defeats you the chief will make him a general, and let him marry his daughter. A guard chuckled. But that won't happen ever, you are? I asked with a chuckle. I'm Toko. Well, a pleasure to meet you. I smiled. We were on the same class. Before you skipped like eight grades, Toko chuckled. I never got to talk to you. He added with a sigh, and now everyone fears you will kill them if they talk to you. Um, wise, I smiled. Ha! Huh. I expected some kind of denial. But oh well, if I die by your hand, I will go down as a hero. Toko laughed, and here I decided I like the guy. I mean you have to have balls to joke about shit like that with someone strong enough to crush you. You are crazy. I chuckled. No one survives Pakusane. Toko shrugged, making me laugh. As I was about to take my leave from the training ground, an angry yell bursted out from the entrance, getting my undivided attention. There you are, Han barked pointing with the spear in his hand. This time he wasn't alone, his friends were with him, all of them with their weapons ready. Didn't I bitch slap you like yesterday? I inquired, with clear amusement, or perhaps, you really want to die. I chuckled, I would be happy to oblige. The crowd he had brought in with him to back him up, has now gone silent as they observed the sudden development with fear. You are a coward, Han grinned, hiding behind your bending, without it, you are nothing. Oh, so he was trying to get me to duel him without bending. Cute, fight me like a man, no bending. And there it was. Ha ha, I love being right. Hum, no bending. I said as I pretended to think about his offer. Hum, how about, no. So it's true, Han laughed, without your bending, you are just a weakling bitch, bitch. Well, that was new, I have to be honest. I wasn't angry at Han, no it's like getting angry with a cockroach for being a cockroach. But in this very moment I did wonder did he really have a death wish, because if he does, I'm not gonna say no, but I shouldn't say yes. So you really want to fight me without bending? I chuckled. If you think you can handle the beast, oh god he refers to himself as the beast, the battle hasn't begun, and he has already damaged me. Alright if this will get you out of my back, fine. I sighed, I was confident I could deal with him, after all. I had trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, I wasn't an expert, but I was certainly better than him. Then take this. Han shouted running in a straight line awesome strategy. Taking a deep breath I took a step to the side dodging his sad attempt to attack, while I broke the spear in half, and with a quick jab knocked him out. A duel lasted literally 5 seconds, maybe 6. Though being fair with him he lasted 5 seconds more than he usually does. So, you guys wanna turn? I smiled at them, lowering the temperature around. Oh and tell your friend that if he ever bothers me again, I will personally put him in a wheelchair. I was not well, maybe. They all nodded, and as soon as I kicked their friend towards them well, they ran, wise, wow, that was sad. Sakura laughed as she entered the training ground, am I right to assume you kicked Hanzo's ass? Yep, yeah, I nodded, not bothering to correct the name she had used. Boy, 
that never gets old, Sakura sighed. It does, I sighed, it does, while this said repetitive event of my life had been fun the first 40 times. It got like everything at one point, old. It was more of a chore than a practical joke now, and that made me sad. What's the point of crushing his ego if I can't truly enjoy it? Well, it doesn't matter, Sakura said rolling her eyes at me. I wanted to invite you and you to eat at my inn. The chef has a new dish, and I want you two to be the testers. I chuckled, is it safe to have the princess trying something that might or might not kill her? I mean the chef is awesome, but sometimes new things can kill. I teased, if push comes to shove, I'll just run away, Sakura shrugged. In the end, the new dish was actually pretty good. It was like soup but different, I'm just bad at describing food, but it was awesome. You seemed to enjoy it, and so did Crowley, and well, I loved it. I couldn't help but sigh in anticipation at days like this. I knew I was coming. He would be here in a couple months, two to three months. For now though, I will just enjoy this before I set out to explore the world. With my new mission at hand, messing with the Fire Nation as much as possible. Did I want to kill Ozai? MMM maybe. But that was Arn's job. All I wanted for now was to learn from other bending styles like Iroh did and become the number one enemy of the First Nation for fun. It would be fun to see little Azula trying to kill me. Or Sasu I mean, Zuko trying to kill me. Make the both of them at the same time. You know what scratch that? I do want to fight Ozai. But not to stop him, just to prove water is the best element. Sir, we have intruders. A guard shouted, and for a brief moment I wondered why was he addressing me. And then I remembered I was the royal guard. It's not my fault I don't actually have to do anything. I get paid to exist. I'll be back, I said as I left the inn, not before asking, why are you two so calm? Don't you guys care, I teased. Maybe for the guys fighting you, you offered with a smirk. Yes, I'm with little Y on that one, Sakura winked at me. Jesus, I can feel the love, I said leaving the inn, their laughs chasing me out. You POV I was sad, angry and frustrated. My best friend, the brother the spirits had given me was going to leave anytime soon. I knew that. I could see it in his eyes, that he was waiting for something, before leaving. And, I didn't want him to leave. You know that even if he leaves he will come back, Sakura said. She was the one person I could trust with this matters. I know. But is it so bad for me to want him here? On the tribe forever. I sighed. No. But you know he isn't exactly happy here, Sakura said. Your father sees him as a weapon, Paki hates him I think, and everyone else fears him all well. Wants something from him. She took a pause. He beats people on a daily basis. Because they think his demise will bring them glory it's hard, besides us three. He has no one, no reason to stay. I knew she was right. I know, Cor, yes Crowley. I love you as well. I petted the needy raven, that Akira had spoiled a lot. In a piece while bending was a crucial part of the bending art, emotions were fuel to the power you could put out. But that only could take you so far. That was something Paki himself had taught me, a lesson I still held very close to me. Akira, that voice, it was unmistakable who it was, Paku. But what was he doing here? And why now? We need to talk, do we? I said bitterly. I know you don't like me, and to be honest, I don't like you either, Paku sighed, taking a seat beside me. But that doesn't mean you don't deserve an apology. He added, much to my surprise. Sumerize, Paku Sumerize. I sighed in annoyance, though deep down I wanted him to continue. I was wrong to force my ways into you, Paku said. It was your choice, and I took it. And that led me to an embarrassing defeat, he added with a low chuckle. You were very out of touch with your inner spirit that fight. I chuckled, finding myself easing into the conversation. I have no doubts that if today we were to fight, I would defeat you easily. But that day I won because you were unstable, very unstable. Something I had learned a year after a fight. We were pretty much evenly matched that day. But I was in control, Paku nodded. Anger is a path to self-destruction. Well, I have to go. I said, leaving the old master behind, not before asking. What brought this on? I know you, you are too proud for your own good. A good friend and a cup of tea, Paku answered. Well, wasn't that cryptic way the cup of tea Iroh was here? Iroh POV life was a wonder, a true adventure waiting for everyone to take their first step, creating a beautiful and unique path for everyone that dares to live it. Such a thing was not to be wasted with anger, hate, self-loathing. No, it was to be enjoyed with love, family and a good cup of tea. Still meditating, Zhao asked in annoyance. Peace comes from within Zhao. Do not seek it without. Poor Zhao, always so lost. Always so angry. Power corrupts those weak enough to allow such no. That was wrong. Because it is a man's own mind, not his enemy, money, or power. That lures him to the wrong path. Did you know where is Zuko? Zhao asked while glaring at me. You know he's a traitor, so give him up if you have him. Oh yes, my treacherous nephew. I said shedding a fake tear. Unfortunately for me, 
No, I did know. But why would I ever answer such a question? This man needs more tea to let his brain breathe. Otherwise he will go brain dead. Very well, Xiao sighed leaving my room. I wonder if my dear friend got my letter. It was one of life's true pleasures, helping others. And I was hopeful my advice helped clear the mind of any turmoil. Paku was suffering. Arm POV I was scared. But I couldn't let them know that they all believe in me. They all believe in the Avatar. A title I never wanted, but one that only I can't bear. But all lies become dust one way or another, like Jayatso would always say. There are three things that cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. Arm, are you okay? Katara asked her voice ever so sweet, so gentle. It was like the winds of spring caressing my spirit. Katara stopped asking him the same question is driving me nuts. Sokka said in annoyance. Well, I for one care how he feels. Katara huffed, if only she knew how much her simply yet hit woman words meant for me. I do too, but for the love of. Ask him something else. Sokka grumbled, making me laugh a bit. Fine so, how far are we from the Northern Water Nation? Katara inquired with a sigh. Three weeks or so, I answered with a wide smile. Huh. I always thought flying would be faster, Sokka commented. Sokka, don't forget it's better to travel well than to arrive. I chuckled, we are safe, and that's all that matters. I can agree with that, Katara nodded. Zuko POV thanks to my uncle I had infiltrated Zhao's ship that was on its way to capture the Avatar. Something I was planning to sabotage myself. No one was going to capture the Avatar except for me. I needed him to restore my honor, to regain my father's love to come back home. I couldn't fail. This was my destiny. I was born to capture this fiend bringing glory to the Fire Nation. Oh strange guard. That voice, what was my uncle doing? He knows we need to avoid contact. I need your help you see. I have two cups of tea. And well, I need someone to drink the cup I won't be using. I am on duty. I hissed. Oh well, I suppose I can always tell Zhao. He needs to know his ship has very unsubordinated soldiers. He was blackmailing me to drink tea with him tea. Fine, I'll go. I almost shouted. Oh, what a sudden change of heart. It must be the smell of my jasmine tea, Uncle Iroh stated proudly. I have been told a sip of it takes you on an adventure of flavor and self-discovery. Sometimes I just hate my uncle. Right this way. Uncle Iroh smiled, pushing the door open to a room, where a steaming smell of tea invaded my nose. Take a seat. Once he closed the door, I turned to him and hissed. You know I need to keep a low profile. This is my chance to get the Avatar only with the Avatar I will be saved, Zuko. You need to see beyond the lines. No one can save us. No one but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path to redemption, Uncle Iroh sighed sadly. Do you truly think the capturing the Avatar will bring you all that you want? It has too, I muttered. Well, enough of that, Uncle Iroh said, looking disappointed for a second. But why? Time for some nice and relaxing tea. To help you clear your mind, Zhao will notice I'm the only guide you have invited. I still thought this was an awful idea. Nonsense? I already drank some tea with each member of the ship, including Zhao himself. Uncle Iroh laughed, sharing tea is one of life's true delights. Smart they can't track him with that very smart. Today I was at a new bar. I had just found the bar was small but cozy. And here I was having a nice relaxing day off. Behind the counter Pico, a small well-dressed man with a tiny moustache, was flipping drinks like a beast comma m alcohol bending. Here you go, Pico grinned putting a drink in front of me. I looked at the man and then to the drink I hadn't ordered in puzzlement. What is this? This is my thanks for bringing me clients, Pico winked. Having the demon of the north in my bar brings hundreds just to see you. Okay. I said, a bit uncertain, but a free drink is a free drink. Is one of my best drinks, is called Northern Paradise, Pico stated proudly. Enjoy, he added, going back to serve other customers. After enjoying my drink, I decided to leave, and as I was about to, a man barged up to the bar almost running into me. Thank goodness for my water sense. The man in question was a tall young man with a long thin ponytail, dressed in the normal attire for the Northern Water Tribe guard attire with sword, and a short bow strapped on his back. Pico. He yelled, running straight to the counter. The man seemed greatly upset as he banged his fists on the countertop, making me wonder if I would have to intervene. But something was off, the man looked familiar. But I could not quite remember where I had seen him before. Odd. I wonder where I had seen him. Pico looked up from the drink he was making. Ah, Ron, how can I assist you? Did you come to pay me what you owe me? There was a certain bitterness in his tone. I told you to not tell anyone, cried Ron in anger. I will make sure you all right, time to do my job. You will make sure of what? I inquired with slight amusement. Shut the fuck dash the poor, poor man couldn't finish his sentence, when he realized who was I. By all means, continue. I smirked, his reaction was delightfully delicious. Sir, it was not my intention to I shushed him as I walked towards him. The bar had by this point gone completely silent. Now, pay your bill and never come back. 
I whispered close to his ear, or I will freeze your balls, Capich. Yes, the man nodded in fear. Good, I smiled patting his cheek as I turned to Pico. Thanks for the drink, a pleasure Mr. Demon. Pico waved at me as I left his bar. After leaving the bar I decided to buy some groceries, and with that in mind, I was now walking down to the trade street. It was noon, so it was now full of people and patrolled by pairs of elite uniformed city guards. This place was very well guarded, one of the most guarded places actually, mostly to avoid thievery and similar stuff. As I turned around a corner around one of the many shrines, I found myself on a tranquil street where people were surrounding something. White fur was around the general area, and I was sure I could smell the faint yet invasive smell of wet fur. It took me a second to manage to get around the people to see something that made my day even better. Appa, besides the big sky bison, no other than the young avatar, Arn and his friends. Arn was currently explaining to the people around his pet how much Appa loved food. Welcome to the Northern Water Tribe. I smiled people around started to slowly scatter. So you are the demon of the north, Soccer inquired in disbelief, and I have to say I was impressed at the speed they learned about me. You don't seem that tough, he added. You can always try and see how tough I really am. I smiled at Sokka, which in turn made him take a step back. We are looking for Paku, Ahn said breaking the silence. Do you know where to look? He asked with a hint of hope on his voice. I do. I nodded, go to the palace, and ask the chief for him. Why do they call you the demon of the north? Katara inquired, they just said to avoid you. But you seem nice, appearances are deceiving. I winked at her, getting a blush from her, and a glare for the ever-pacifist avatar, and, while well, the title was given to me after I defeated Paku, you defeated the Grandmaster. Sokka smiled, maybe you can teach Ahn instead. No, I shook my head with a laugh, I have other things to do. No, I didn't, see you later. One glance at him showed me something, he was still too weak to entertain me, for now. I was going to wait for him to grow. In the meantime, I have one thing to stop, and killing Zhao was the key to do it. Iro POV Zhao was going to fail this invasion, his mind was not at peace with itself. His mind was stuck in the past while dreaming of a glorious future where he would be the one to win this war. And he was forgetting the delightful present. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future, concentrate the mind on the present moment. Wise words, words that most ignored. We are two months away from the Avatar, Zhao stated. I will destroy the Avatar and the Northern Water Tribe. All in one I will win this for the Fire Nation. Such confidence only brings misfortune. I smiled at him, be always wary of your enemy, he's a child, Zhao scoffed. You would be surprised of what a child can do when pushed against a corner. I stated, don't forget Zhao, even a child can become a monster to be feared if pushed enough, he's nothing to be afraid of, but I am overconfidence. It will be his own outdoing, after all overconfidence will only drown him in a sea of reality. Arm POV the demon of the north, I didn't expect him to be so, not demon-like. But there was something on his eyes, something when he was looking at me. Something hungry. That guy thinks he's too good for us. Sokka was still rambling above how he didn't want to teach me. He has a life Sokka. We can't expect him to drop his duties for us, Katara stated. Besides, if Paku trained him, maybe he can duplicate that result with us. The idea of training with Katara. It made my heart pump blood a bit faster. I would love to. Well, I for one will volunteer with the warriors of the tribe, Sokka said with a wide smile. I'll make us some money and show how good the Southern Water Tribe really is. Thanks, Sokka. I smiled. I was lucky to have such good friends. Time is a funny thing when excited. It seemed just yesterday Arn had arrived, and that was two months ago, and surprisingly enough things had gone in the canon path. Arn was accepted by Paku right away, and on the other hand, Katara got rejected also right away. But after a little fight between the two, Katara also got to learn with Paku. Though there was one part that was out of the canon line, you didn't like Sokka. She said, and I quote, the guy is cute but too immature. And I suppose she's right. I couldn't really tell. Things were going rather well. For everybody for now. If my memory served me right, the Fire Nation would attack anytime soon. Though this invasion would go rather different. I wasn't going to allow him to kill the spirit. And you he was going to die by my hands. A very painful death. Though I couldn't help but wonder, was I truly capable of taking a human life? I knew I had made my peace with that fact. The fact I would inevitably would have to kill at one point. But would that matter in the end I suppose I will find out soon enough. To think the Avatar was alive, you said, snapping me out of my thoughts. It is... I nodded, deciding it was time to tell her I was leaving soon. You, I wanted to tell you that dash. You are leaving soon, you said, stopping me mid-sentence. I know I have known for a while. I don't care, as long as you promise you will come back one day, she added with hope in her eyes. I winked at her playfully. I will one day. So when? You asked. Soon, just waiting for something to happen. God, since when I'm this cryptic. I see I put my hand on her mouth. 
I had felt something moving towards us, my water sense felt something. At a prodigious speed, a man leapt from the roof of a house in the market we were waking, his arms and legs spread wide as if skydiving. I kept my eyes on the man, seeing how he easily landed on one of the guards in the market in a frog crash. His armor, his body temperature and how he burned a house in the market as soon as he landed. There was no doubt, Zhao was here. As he stood up, blood dripping from his razor shard blade, he stared at me no. It was at you. Get back to the castle. I ordered you with a tone that left her no option but to comply. I will deal with this. I turned to see two guards behind me. Stay with her at all times, almost immediately after you left with the guards, panicked cries broke out, and the guards in the market got into action as more and more Fire Nation soldiers jumped down from nearby roofs. The assailants all wore identical armors. As the battle started in the marketplace, the first soldier I had laid my eyes on started the combat with a powerful stream of fire. That was about as useful as an ass-flavored lollipop, for it all it took me to counter his attack was to rise a wall of ice thick enough to block his attack. Well, with a sigh my hand moved in a blur, and immediately after the fast movement several ice spikes pierced the man in front of me killing him. It seems I'm not that troubled at the whole killing thing. Oh well, too bad for the invasors. One by one I continued to mutilate the Fire Nation soldiers, as I made my way to the gates, where the real fight had just begun. The city was on fire. It was truly terrifying how fast things could go from peachy to fucking hell-like. I continued moving forward, and as I was to kill another Fire Nation soldier, I decided to try a new approach, where is Zhao? I asked the man as I freeze his legs and arms in an icy prison. I will never the man didn't got to finish his sentence. And how could he the poor thing had his head rolling in the icy floor, leaving a sticky trail of blood behind its bloody path. Well, let's keep going. I sighed as I continued to do what I was paid for killing this bastards. Though I had to be honest, so far this had been quite disappointing. They were very very weak, was everyone that weak overall. Then again I was fighting your run-of-the-mill soldier, nothing special. Just disposable pawns in this war. If I was Zhao where would I? And then it hit me if I was Zhao. I would still be on my ship planning. Well let's say hi. Zhao POV we had 4 hours before the night started to approach 4 hours to deal as much damage as possible. We should wait for the morning to come. The darker it gets the more powerful the water tribe will be, Iroh stated. And the old decrepit fart was right. I will but for now. We will weaken them. My plan was perfect. The only way to stop the water tribe was by killing the spirits that gave them the power in the first place. But that would have to wait for now, I didn't want the sentimental of Iro trying to stop me. Sir, we are having a problem. A soldier said pointing to my fleet and from afar. I could see a massive wave was coming away. So far the wave had knocked two of my ships, which shouldn't be possible. The Fire Nation's ships were designed to break waves with ease. How many benders do they have doing this? I wanted an answer, I demanded an answer. It seems it's just one, Iro commented as he saw through a spyglass. This will be hard. I haven't seen a waterbender with such skill since the Battle of the Mists. Who the fuck was that bender behind all this? It didn't matter when I got my hands on the bastard he would be dead. Retreat and regroup for now. That tricky bastard will keep throwing waves at us until there is nothing left. But bodies in the frozen sea, anger will not win this siege, Iro commented with a smile. It took me a while to figure out which ship his entire fleet was Zhao at. But eventually I did. And here I stood face to face with Zhao a few meters away from each other. The admiral stood upright, arms crossed with a cocky expression on his face. I was calm, sporting a hungry smile for battle. Iro was in the corner looking at me with expectation. The two Fire Nation men took a few seconds to observe me closely before doing anything. This was going to be fun. That much I could tell from Zhao's expression said that much, his face said that I was a waste of his time. And I was about to prove him wrong. Is nothing personal, is just business. I lied, this was personal. Now let's do this, shall we? The admiral sighed in annoyance, uncrossing his arms and stretching his right hand forming it into a first towards me. A torrent of fire spurred out of his fist towards me. He was stronger than all the soldiers I had killed, but no by much with a disappointed, with a sigh I moved sideways, dodging his attack by a few inches. Darting forward with a water whip I had created, I proceeded to grab his ankle, dragging him towards me, as I slowly restrained him with water, you are a disappointment, I said a few inches from his face. Zhao was shocked and surprised to see my face only an inch away from his, but that surprise soon turned into anger, and in response, burned through my water restraints and jumped backwards. Zhao wasted no time, at this distance, fire of all sizes was supposed to be lethal. And he knew that, and with the fact I was so close, his mind shouted he could hit me. So with all his strength, he threw the biggest torrent of fire he could muster with his hand. But his right hook and torrent of fire, 
Nelly brushed the now heated air, dodging someone with a battle mindset so straightforward, not thinking at all his approach was extremely easy, and feeling his entire body move, and everything else with water sense made things even easier. So, I leaned back, avoiding the upcoming blow without any problem. This enraged Zhao, who kept throwing his attacks one after the other, it was sad. Zhao seemed shocked none of his attacks were connecting, and little by little his style was slipping. He was letting anger and frustration take control, making his attacks even easier to dodge. Stay still Zhao shouted in anger, swinging his hands together and stretching them forward. Twenty fireballs exploded out of his palms, some of them colliding violently with the walls of the ship, one of them even connected with Iro, who simply put the ball off with ease. At this point Zhao wasn't even trying to aim at me, he had lost whatever little sense he had. Rolling my eyes at him, I erected a wall of very cold water, moving at a very high pressure. The water was so cold that it created a mist around, that only expanded more thanks to Zhao. But even then, Zhao just continued his attack, as he cried out, I've killed more people than you can imagine. Thousands of your kin. I will not lose to you. I am Yao the greatest admiral in the world. Well, then the standards must be very low. Dot. I had calmly walked behind him, with all the steam around and his lack of sense. He didn't notice he was attacking an empty wall of water. Zhao was shocked, and his eyes were now showing a bit of fear, but mostly anger. I smiled at him with a calm demeanor, still completely uninjured. After all, I had managed to dodge all the admiral's attacks effortlessly. Winking at his shock, I gathered water at one point on my index finger as I put a lot of pressure on it with my mind. Zhao jumped back as I shot the water bullet at him. That while looked harmless was enough to break his arm shattering to a now useless appendage. He took a second to register what had just happened before he started to scream in pain. Did you know water with enough pressure can even pierce metal? Or in this case, shatter bones. I lost an arm, so what? Zhao cried in anger, quickly springing using his remaining arm to fight. I just sighed as I avoided every one of his attacks. They were so out of touch it was now painfully easy to do so. You won't touch me. Our strengths are miles apart. I stated with a bored tone. Zhao was raging internally and externally, not giving up at all. Continuing his pointless attacks, for him the idea of me being stronger was impossible. It was too humiliating to his overgrown ego. This was getting sadder and sadder by the second, well... I already broke you spirit time to break your body. I added the last part as I shattered his legs with another high pressure water explosion. Taking his life won't fix anything. Iroh said finally interrupting the battle is up to you to show you are better. I looked at Iroh and then at the bleeding and utterly defeated Admiral Zhao. But Iroh, I'm worse. I smiled at him as a massive high pressure water bomb floated from the sea into the room. This world already has a savior, so I'll take the demon opening. With a snap of my fingers, Zhao was reduced to nothing but a bloody stain in the room as the water bomb exploded, coating everything but me with his blood. Now, command the idiots of the Fire Nation out of here. Before I quite literally steal God's thunder, by turning the sea into a sea of blood, Iroh looked at me and nodded. If you ever need to sort the demons you have allowed within your spirit, come to me I'm always willing to help, and I always have good tea. Iroh POV I looked at the young man and nodded. I suppose I was expecting too much by asking him to forgive Zhao. If you ever need to sort the demons you have allowed within your spirit, come to me I'm always willing to help, and I always have good tea. I smiled, wondering if he would let me help him. If I ever need to sure, Akira smiled, maybe we could have a nice cup of tea now. He sounded excited for some reason, was my jasmine tea that famous? I don't see why not, I did, he had just painted an entire room with someone's blood. But I didn't blame him for the action but for how he did it. In war, death is unavoidable, but this was brutal in many ways. You think I'm a monster, Akira smoked at me. I am, don't overthink it, but I'm one with pseudo good intentions, not like your brother. I chuckled bitterly at that, we all have a monster within young warrior, the difference is in degree, not in kind. Akira looked at me shocked, even you, he inquired. Yes, even me. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like, on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.